do you have the special uh, double amputee Skeletor <laughs> variant that I have? Oh, whoa. Only a bone yeah. doctor would have something yeah. like that. That's, you know, Tila, <laughs> Evil Lynn, Sorceress. So that's got to be how it's going to work. I've so. always liked Evil Lynn. Let's see. She's nasty. You're a walk on the wild side She's kind of guy. She's nasty. I am. <laughs> I am. Uh, all these cases behind me oh, were full when I purchased them years ago. Holy for cow. Than, for less than $8 a figure. Really? Wow. Yes. wow. Dude, what kind of twisted stuff do you do? You're actually like, you're Anthony. <laughs> Well, like, you know, like burning ants, you're burning (laughs) ants and breaking apart your action figures. Okay. So do you do you collect, you know, there are some interesting top toys variations of certain figures. Do you you collect that stuff? I had one of the largest top toys collections probably back in like 2002 mm-hmm. um and i've liquidated most of it because so, there's so many fakes and interesting that's, things coming out wow and there's, and there's original top toy stuff there's second series top toy stuff and then all those top toys molds still exist and they are still being used to make test shots that shouldn't so be being for, made well, haven't, 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 oh, for yeah, our audience, yeah, i just want to say for our audience top toys is a company that manufactured toys in argentina Yes. Right. So, um, and yeah, so I mean, just so God, you're if so you're smart, not, Chris. Well, you're so smart. Star Wars. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. It's, um, the professor. And, and one of the cool things about oh, top toys, top toys. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, oh, right. so yeah. And, and top toys was actually, is actually really famous for having some exclusive items that came out really only for them. So when we're talking about that sort of stuff, just understand that they're in Argentina being, maybe not um as far along in the industrial revolution as america was we'll just say they um didn't have production numbers anywhere near so you're, whenever you're talking top toys you're talking very rare stuff so i'll let you guys get back to it but i just wanted people to know that what that is maybe even talk about like some of the really kind of oddball quirky did you do did you do a video about that I could, if you'd like. No, it would I, be. I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask too. That would be fantastic. I, I have everything photographed. So some really cool yeah. variations. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like pink, uh, pink wing stratos or green limbs moduloc. Uh, some of the card backs are awesome. The the cobra what, con was. Um, I was gonna the say the camouflage, camouflage yeah, one. Yeah. That one's cool. Yeah. I think it's cool. You don't like it? Yeah. We had the buzzsaw um, pictures. Everybody and the... just made customs of it and ruined it. Like, um, is that right? Yep. So that's what you're saying as far as a lot of fakes out there. Oh, yeah. There's so many fakes out there. Even the Modulox. A lot of those those Greenland Modulox you see are not original. Really? Oh. If only there was a company that could authenticate them yeah, as, exactly. a, as original. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. We should start yeah. a company and do that. I like that. I like Chris's that. Chris's archive services. That's where I'm pointing at. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ego much? Oh, yeah, yeah. Josh, let me ask you something. And sure. I'm sorry if I'm changing courses here because it's come up and you hear people talk about it. And I've even heard people say that it's, it's, it's fake. It never existed. Although I'm sure it did. What is a Wonder Bread He Man? And well, yeah. Funny you should ask. My segment <laughs> on it from the toys that made us got cut okay but it's a bonus feature on the dvd or on youtube so you you can watch me talk for like three minutes about it <laughs> or you can just do that right now the are they gonna sue us if, if we talk about it here too or no. do they have the, the okay they're, we're good we're good no loss um, okay so it, it, it was a um an actually mattel produced figure what it actually was is still not 100% clear, but it probably was either an error made in a vast quantity, but it seems to be dumped either as like a giveaway at like a, a regional toy shop, you know, like a toy store. Um, it, there's some evidence that it could have been, you know, sent out as a mail-in, you know, like when you get those rebates that say buy three mail-in, you know, for one free figure. Um I don't know. There was someone that came out with a video recently yeah, with the woman Scott. that wrote a letter. Did you see that one? Yeah, so, so that was Scott Knightley, who was yeah. brand manager uh, for Mattel, for anyone that doesn't mm-hmm. know, um, during the classics, Masters Universe Classics era. And he had this giant Bible that was all, everything you could find at Mattel about He-Man when he became brand manager. And um, he would choke that around. I actually looked through it at PowerCon one year. 
Um, and he recently did a video because he recently discovered a page in there, which was a letter from a mom upset that she received a brown haired He-Man <laughs> and it didn't look anything like the He-Man she saw on TV. And, really? and it was, I, I believe it was Mark Ellis, one of the executives um, at the time that had responded to her. Um, and he also had a copy of that letter. First time I ever saw that document, um, what was the response from Mattel? Well, you yeah. mean from Mark Ellis? Too bad, lady. It was too I bad, didn't... lady. Yeah. What, yeah. Lady? yeah. <laughs> what kind of operation do you think we're running here? Any yeah. Figure, like, yeah. What the figure was going to be, and it's a brown haired He Man. Like, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. It was, was free. It. it was free. You looking a gift yep. horse in the mouth? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, well, was there it... like an advertised offer, though, that had to do yeah. with Wonder Bread or? Uh, as a novice, I'm asking. No, that. no, it has nothing to do with Wonder Bread. That was all a rumor. That's why a lot of oh. people call it like Savage He Man now. But what? Oh. What? Yeah, but what was the genesis of Wonder Bread? Why is? Why was that associated with? Because it in there the first was a, place? because um, there was a Wonder Bread trading card uh, offer mm -hmm. back in the day. So you can find like the bags, you know, uh -huh. from Wonder Bread that say Masters of the Universe on it, and I think it's one of those like Mandela effect things where we remember things differently. Gotcha. So as soon as somebody heard, oh, a mail-in figure, I remember the Wonder Bread offer because that was yeah. one of the largest offers at the time. And I think it just, you know, it spiraled out of control because we had no evidence. Like I was buying Wonder Bread He-Mans in the late 90s. Why are you uh, calling it Wonder Bread He-Man? Because that's what I was buying. <laughs> However, right, right. No, no, that's what I'm getting at. In Fake the 90s, you would, you would advertise it as Fake Wonder news. Bread He-Man. <laughs> When Mattel wanted to do their commemorative series around 2000, they reissued the figures. Um, they, they looked very much like the originals. Mm -hmm. They actually contacted me because the uh, boys toy manager at the time didn't have any toys to do his pitch. So I had to mail Mattel a whole bunch of vintage original figures, including Wonder Bread. Really? Yes. That's cool. And um, I shipped it all to them. Awesome. They used it for the pitch. They sent it back with some test shots and stuff later on. Wow, and, and um, they said there was no evidence that Mattel ever produced a brown-haired He-Man. Was their official response? What? At the time, yep. Huh. But, but we, I mean, we know that not to be true because Absolutely. it's, it's, it's right, not right, true okay. because you can yeah. see from from his head mold, you can tell exactly which He-Man. Right you know, mold produced that Wonder Bread He-Man. Wasn't there, there was some, I can't, I, you're going to know this, then I, I won't. There's all these different lines, but wasn't there a line where they produced a figure called Wondar? Yep, that was Classics. Yep, so that, Scott, that was a, Scott That Knight, was a like, Classics. Who, Is that what you created? mentioned? Did you just mention that? And I wasn't paying no, attention. No, I didn't mention it. But okay, I yeah, okay. But, um, yeah, so I Scott thought maybe Knight, I had a stroke or something. Yeah, Anthony out on us, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> uh, Scott, Scott Knight, like, um, did you, you weren't talking, figure. Chris. You know. <laughs> I, know. I was going to say, uh, Josh, maybe describe that figure and what the line was and kind of what I was say, was referring to. Oh, so uh, Classics uh, was a Mattel line, I think, from 2008 until fairly recently because we just got our Snake Mountains. Um, <laughs> it was produced by Mattel and Super 7, and it was like a six-inch um, modernized He-Man line. So, mm -hmm. you know, it had more points of articulation. They drew a lot from the original figures, but they were also able to do a lot of figures that were never produced. Um, some cool concept figures that, that we had artwork for that were produced in, um, uh, that we first showed in our foundation book. So like Cygor, that, that gorilla that he was supposed to like ride on. Um, we, we first showed that to Scott and he, he brought that and, and brought that figure to life. Huh. Um, so anyway, so that figure, yeah, that, line, right. that line was huge. They did hundreds of figures. And um, for they did like uh, monthly figures, quarterly figures. They did special figures, and one of the figures they did was Wondar. Um, you know, W U N W U N dash D A R, right? Right, because obviously you couldn't infringe on Wonder's trademark. So that's yeah. outstanding. And so he was brown hair, but he had. So what a lot of people did, you know, not knowing what accessories went with the special promotion He Man, Wonder Bread mm -hmm. He Man, whatever. There was the accessory pack that you could buy for if you lost weapons over time. Mm -hmm. That was a Zodak, the figure with the uh, had almost like a W on his red chest. What do you call that chest plate? And yeah, the armor, chest armor. Yeah, yeah, right. That, that exact yeah. one right there. Perfect. So 
you know, but the the accessory pack was black, right? With the right. W. Yep. And so people sometimes you'll see people put that on the Wonder Bread yeah. He Man, that black one. And when they reissued the Wondar, it came with that, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah. the accessories are from uh, Manny Faces came out with a, a special promo pack one time and it, with extra weapons. Right. Manny that's weapons. How it was advertised. Yeah. It's called Manny, Manny weapons. weapons. Even though it still says Manny Faces on the card, right. but we call right. it Manny Weapons. Right. Yeah. And people put like the sword and the axe from that set with, with the Wonder Bread or Savage He Man as well. I want to actually like segue in just um, you you showed Zodak and that was probably the lamest He Man picture that was figure that was ever like what is him? He's just like a, a guy with a mask. Well, well, like, well, the, like he had really, nothing. Yeah, but but the Masters of the Universe line was amazing in that they, they produced only like two different you know bodies in the first line like three different arms, two different legs, yet they made all these different characters. So for very little money, yeah. you know, they were able to get their line out there. That's a good point. Yeah, but he was a ripoff. That was, I was so disappointed in that. Wasn't year. he neutral? That was his spiel. Yeah, well, spiel. His, he right, was neutral. He's a cosmic, yeah, cosmic enforcer, but yeah. he's to, like, keep the balance. It wasn't good, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good, wasn't bad. Yeah, he was neutral. yeah, I mean, that was the idea of it. But, I mean, in certain books and comics and stuff. He's Switzerland. Have, He's, he's Switzerland of the he's barely, even in, the he's barely even in the cartoon because like nobody even cared about no. him. That's why. So I'm he has just, a flying chair. Uh, woo! So does C three PO. Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, go, going back up really quick, well, I don't know what to call him since you're gonna get mad at me to say Grails. But yeah. let's say you're a um a, a grandma or a grandpa now, and, and you find your your kids' old He Man stuff to open. Yep. Like, what are the the ones that like that you're gonna like? going to look for that as loose figures are are ones that so are the big big so, money so right now when i was collecting like even not too long ago uh the early eight backs really weren't that desirable and all of a sudden the last few years early eight back figures have taken off and you can still find them in lots um you can still find them at flea markets yard sales so just because it looks like it's an early he-man it could be a really good early he-man not just gotcha. like a good he-man figure so you know, you need to look for for little things like you said, the red dots on on uh, man at arms, or the blue beard on Stratos. Um, uh, there's all other subtle differences that that a normal person that doesn't like really really collect, like you saw from my video, like looking at the color of the dots in Beast Man's eye. Nobody's really right. going to do that. But like, um, does that affect value significantly? Significantly. Okay, um, so like, how much? I mean, if you're, to... uh, I mean. I've seen like Bluebeard Stratos is seven hundred, eight hundred, a thousand dollars now. As opposed to what? As opposed to like a regular Stratos, you know, thirty, forty bucks. Okay. Yeah. And then, then the the last line of figures, similar again to Star Wars, right? You yeah. had so your Scareglow, your King Randor, so exactly. Those are... Yep. So so the the later figures, so like Sorcerers, King Randor, uh, Clamp Champ, Scareglow, Ninja, Scareglow is taken off. Yeah, like, it's like, crazy. And not only as the vintage figure. Uh, taken off. It's driven the market for anything Scareglow, including the new origins. Right, they're making a ton of. Yet everybody wants Scareglow. What's the What's the very most recent release figure that ever the two pack that everyone's going nuts oh, for? I'm yeah, seeing. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's like the the or like the the Keldor. You know, with before Skeldor right. gets his face burned off with acid. It's Keldor. I don't remember that story. Yeah. So to, 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 I, I I saw right. that. So it's it looks like Skeletor, but he's got a face. I didn't right. realize so, that that's so the origin Ke of Skeletor. Well, Keldor and King Randor are brothers. Mm -hmm. So, um, at some point, depending on which story you're reading, Keldor gets acid thrown in his face, and it melts off, and he becomes Skeletor. Um, wow. I I guess I never knew that. I never knew that. Draw, trap draw before he gets his metal like lower jaw is called Kronos. Um, and, and he was more human like. So they were just two like early really again it's just Mattel reusing parts because it pretty much is just like a skeletor figure and a trap jaw figure with slightly different head and a little other changes. And that was definitely something I got from the, the toys that made us. It's so funny if you watch I watched, you know, the the Star Wars one and it was such a rush to get these out. The movie was already out. People wanted, you know, you, you watch the Transformers one and you know, it, it's a lot of, you know, people in Japan and they have these, you know, all these things that you know, they're doing very, very carefully. And then you're talking about the He Man stuff like, dude, we were having some beers and I was thinking, you know, we should put a tail on this thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was so random. Right, but but that's that's why the line worked was because it, it could be anything. Like, you know, it was the fantasy, you know, the medieval, there was some sci-fi, there was 
you know, there's military aspects to it. So I think it was cool. It, it, and it included everything. Like, right. you know, you didn't feel like you couldn't be part of the Masters of the Universe line. Like, no mm -hmm. matter what your background was, you could mm -hmm. identify with some character somewhere. Yeah, I identify with Orko. I think that's pretty much what <laughs> we, we're about the same height. So that's the nice thing about he and I, you know, it's like I also cl clumsy and, and I can't do magic. So, yeah, I have a lot in common with Orko. Uh, <laughs> Um, comics now, I, so we, we can we can open up the, this forum. Although we've already been talking for an hour, but like so, comics now are a huge collectible. Um, and you mentioned that there are variations in the Masters of the Universe comics. Are there any comics that are like yep. gra Grails? I hate. I don't know. What do you want me to call them? <laughs> I just call give them me a word. Highly, highly desirable. Yeah, harder, <laughs> yeah. To find. yeah, harder to find. Um, in my eight back video, I talked about the um, the original, you know, ones that say free on it. And then Mattel realized, oh, we can't say free. So real lazily, they they left the burst <laughs> and just like erased the word free <laughs> on it. So those are the transition ones. And then you have, you know, the, the third version that just has no little burst or anything on it. Obviously, the free ones are, are worth more. The ones with free usually sell for maybe $25 to $50 if they're in great condition. Um, the ones with the Hot Wheel back... Um, I haven't seen one sell recently, but I really haven't been paying attention. But I imagine those would go for a considerable amount more. Did you own any of those? Yeah, I showed them in the video. I, so, sometimes it's hard to tell whether it was a picture. <laughs> right, you know. right, right, I'm teasing. So. Um, yeah, so I have, I think I have, uh, of the four original, I think I have two of them um, with the Hot Wheel backs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, then, like... oh, yeah, and then you were asking about other comics. Um, uh, Tale of Tila is an early 82 comic that came with Tila. Um, it and, came and then, with the figure? It came with the figure. All of it, all of it the, came with the oh, figure. Oh, so, right. so, so the mini comic, okay. The mini gotcha. comic, right. But it only came with, with Tila. Tila. <laughs> so, um, again, though, there are, you know, factory errors. So somebody's going to say, oh, I have the... Yes, th there are some... Uh, you, you can go and find, like, very rare either factory errors or just variants because, like, factories would run out of one comic... And I, I can assure you, they didn't care what comic went into that figure <laughs> right. to get that out the door. Right. So yes, you can find different, you know, overlap of. There's a standard list of which comics came with which figures, um, but you can find, you know, some variability within that list. Huh. And then, and then there's one other comic, uh, Ultimate Battleground, that came with the Eternia. Um, that one's really sought after. So. Wow. So it's unique to Eternia. Yeah. Although, I, again, I think you may be able to find that with one other figure. But okay. Yeah. And that's like as far as um, that's rare and hard to find. Uh, yep. That's like the well, the, the, well of, of all the castles, that's definitely the rarest. Oh yeah, and, yeah, Eternia's, and super hard to find in good shape because like that it was, it, it looks so fragile even right when it first came out. Yeah, I mean. all, all the tracks would break. Uh, stickers are awful. The blue plastic they used discolors very easily. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. For for whatever reason, it, it does not hold up well. Um, even ones that you see that are unused in the box will still have discoloration and you know other issues. So, what do you, what do you think a sealed attorney would go for? Fully sealed? Uh, not as much as you think. I tried selling really? it years ago. Yeah, well, that's um, interesting. I, you think I would think thousands and thousands. Uh, the, the issue is um, space. Yeah. So the reason I was selling mine was I, I just didn't have the room for it, and I didn't right, need right. sealed one. Um, it, it's huge. You know, so huge. Um, yeah, the, the box is thirty six inches by thirty six inches by oh, crazy by like twelve twelve plus inches. So it's giant. You can't just ship it anywhere. It costs the fortune. Um, I imagine now you're you're probably talking five to eight thousand, which is less than yeah for a, for as yeah, yeah, for as desirable 10. as it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. would well, ten well, was the like number prices, I was thinking too. Prices skyrocketed, and I I don't I don't really deal with <laughs> prices now, so it may well be over ten. So yeah, wow. Yeah. I think we've graded one I was at say, least have you one. Ever one. We have graded at least one. I think right. it was a it was a qualified one, so it was unused con contents, but an open box. But I mean, just I mean, crazy that 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 someone had that and didn't open, you know, yep. didn't open and well, this one was open, but play with it. Yeah. You know. Well, because again, when it comes to any of this stuff, it's forty years old. How many yeah. times have you moved stuff in the last 40 years? I mean, yeah. my Power of the Force 2 stuff is trash because it was on my wall, then it moved to my apartment, then it moved to my first house, then it moved to my second house, was under the stairs, was in the attic. I mean, 
you know, over the course of time, the pe- the fact that this stuff still pops out mint, you're like, what the, yeah. you know. So. Yeah, you're right. It still amazes me when someone has a dead mint carded figure from like you know the early '80s. It's still it's just amazing to me. Yeah, and there's so much of it still out there. And Good. especially like like look at okay, going back to Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars was valuable. We need and, to get we need to get you a going back to Star Wars. I know, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, Star Wars was collectible, like valuable collectible in the early '90s when you were spe- spending eight dollars for Master of the Universe stuff. So I you know for me. If I always had a bunch of Masters of the Universe stuff back in the 90s, I'd be like, I'm just going to put it with my Power of the Force 2 stuff. Not worth nothing. Well, now it's worth a ton. But it would have yeah. been moved around and treated accordingly. And the fact that people were keeping these so nice is pretty yeah. it's amazing. Except, the heck for Anthony, except for Anthony. He just abused all his figures. Yeah, broke them. I played with my toys, okay? I, I added, You don't seem like the type that would be destructive, but you know... <laughs> it's the ones you never suspect that really get you. Josh, back me up. This happened in the attic, right? Yeah, this absolutely. Is, these things yep. happen. All right, it wasn't me. It was not you, jo- Josh. What's I, what's your of all your master stuff? What's your favorite? What's your favorite thing to collect? Uh, I stopped buying production stuff years and years ago. Okay. Um, I only buy, you know, people. So your snob. So your snob. Yeah, I knew you were going there. I knew you were going there. Oh, you walked right into that trap. I should have helped you. No, I knew there was. I could not compete. So like, I never went down the gift set. You know, um, like people were spending fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on a gift set. Yeah. Whoa. Um, and this was years ago. I, I knew. I knew I would never do that. Um, I, I, that's interesting that you you went into pre production because you couldn't afford production. It's not, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? that's, 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 that's not how it works. Yeah, so, that's so not how it I works. Buying production, yeah. I was buying, you know, an Earl Norm drawing on eBay for one hundred and fifty five dollars, or yeah. I was buying like the Golden Book archives that were sold on eBay. I have all my original receipts from that. Like, it's amazing what the original artwork was going for. So I just. Yeah. Flipped I flipped to that at the time. Yeah, and I'd rather have that too, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. So, but, but like, I, I still love just, you know, your classic He Man, your 1981, 82 He Man. Except for Zodak. Nobody Zodak likes him. Nobody, he's the Lobot nope. of, he's the Lobot yeah. of He Man. So, just going to put that out there. So. Oh. Going back to Star Wars. As, as it turns out, it's all I know. You 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 hired a one trick pony. The, the yeah. first day, you're like, this guy knows a lot of stuff. That you're like, oh, he really only knows a lot about one thing, <laughs> and it's every, what everybody else knows. Every episode, we need to have an over under about how many <laughs> arrows to your head. Well, Matt, I get to Star put in Wars. Wars, Star Wars knob, Star yeah. Wars guy. You know, uh, we're already at twenty. Yeah, I, at least, at least. Um, well, okay, so do we have any more questions for Josh, or do you want to move on to the next segment? Josh, what are you no. looking for? What what's missing from your collection that oh, you're looking for? That's always so I, a tricky thing to answer. Steve Sands, we won't answer that question because then all of a sudden the price of that goes way up. So again, careful, Star, Star Wars guy. Back, going back yeah. to Star Wars. Yeah, no, uh, I'm, I'm I'm always buying, uh, it, you know, anything pre-production. I'm always interested in, you know, whether it be artwork or 3D prototypes, test shots, anything like that. Um, but more realistically, I am looking for uh, vintage catalogs. So not just the Mattel catalogs, but like anything from like HG to um, uh, any other like licensing type catalog from the 80s that has anything masters. I don't even care if it only has it by, you know, text. It doesn't even have to have a picture in it. If yeah. it mentions masters, uh, you know, I'm trying to track those down. I have catalogs from Chile, from, you know, the, I have the Leo catalogs from India. Really? Um, oh. Yeah, wow. so, so there's the Leo a, stuff is very cool too. Yeah, we should do you should do yeah something on that videos on those variations I, I, too would be great. I, I, I there are some people with amazing Leo collections. Yeah, right now. those I, are great. Yeah. So Leo was produced in, in India and really yes. is a, not a country that you hear from. You don't hear of any buyers like going oh. back to Star Wars. You know, <laughs> now it's gonna be it's gonna be my catchphrase. But you don't. <laughs> sorry, wake 23. up, Ross. 23 <laughs> but you know but you don't you don't hear any like i i never sold anything to india i've never had anybody buy anything from me from india it's not a country that you know like india and africa are, are africa is more than a country it's a whole continent but it's not even a country but i mean you don't get people <laughs> sorry 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 <laughs> uh, i didn't want anybody to think that i thought i think africa you should go back country. to star wars chris chris i think you should go back to star wars <laughs> 
Professor, right there. If I, if I, if I wasn't so affordable, I'd be fired. That's, uh, but, but no, but you, you just, there are certain areas in the world that you don't sell to very often. Yep. And India is one that you just, you don't. So it's interesting. Why, do you have something against Indian people? <laughs> Why, you wouldn't sell to India? Are you trying to, like, pigeonhole me, Ross? I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, buddy. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> no, but, but, but I bought from India. So I, I have two Leo Gray Skulls that I bought from just, like, small-time sellers that just happened to throw it on. You know, some random eBay, not even eBay US. Um, I saw your I mean, Leo's, your Leo uh, Grayskull. That's a cool piece. Two, two of them. I have two of them. Unbelievable. Um, Unbelievable. I'm going to call you a snob again. From India. Yeah. Um, I, maybe one last question for me. Um, oh, unless someone else has, I'm not, I'm not trying to get, say I got the last <laughs> word, but you know, you've collected masters a long time, right? Yep. And, and you're still focused on that. What keeps you interested in it? You know, just staying uh, in that realm. I, it was definitely my favorite line as a kid. Yeah. And then um, I started dating my wife when I was 16. Sorry. Uh, yep. I started dating my wife when I was 16. And when we were dating, she bought me one of those store displays, the like three foot 3D vacuum form He Man store displays. Awesome. Really? Um, that I still have. And um, from there, uh, we went away to college together and we collected, bought, sold um he man together so it's something i've been you know doing you know um you know my wife has been really supportive so if she wasn't that's supportive awesome. of it, it there's no way i could have done it this long yeah, yeah. that's cool yeah. so it's something she's still into it and still uh she's always supportive uh with my collecting it was she's the reason i have all these is that if you can buy one buy them all like <laughs> yeah you know like if, if one is a good deal then 100 is a good deal so um that's excellent. Behind yeah. every 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 really really big collector is a supporting wife. I'll say Absolutely. that for sure. <laughs> and tolerance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they put up with so much. <laughs> you know, oh, my wife always says it's better than you being out drinking or yep. gambling or doing yeah. whatever. You're nerd on. There, yeah. no. there are many vices, and this is ours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no. Well, thanks, Josh. Yeah, I mean, thank you're. For you know again fantastic job on the video we look Thank forward you. to future ones and um i i do want to note as well that the the only person wearing a ces shirt is the non-ces guy i'm yes. wearing our great <laughs> cs youtube shirt so it's the anthony made ces yeah, youtube shirt, beautiful so. beautiful shirt <laughs> And actually, um, so up next, we're going to be doing Investor's Corner, and Josh is going to hang out through all of them because, as it turns out, not only does he know a thing or two about about Masters of the Universe, but um, we're going to do a special – well, we're going to not only do a toy segment, but Ross is going to be hosting a um, sports card and non-sports card segment. And it turns out Josh also – Hold on. I was, supposed to, I was supposed to do that? Oh, if that, you know, go, uh, Google it. Yeah, just it, it, it. all right. You got, oh, I'm, you got five minutes. Ten minutes, guys. Yeah, exactly. How hard can it really be? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah just pulling right. eBay links. So yeah, right. Any any fool can do that. Right. So coming up next is Investors Corner. We're gonna see you guys 